SI joint pain, something that's really correlated with chronic lower back pain. The goal for today is just to give you the most helpful tips and best practices because this is a very common condition and there's a lot of things that you can do and things that you can avoid that can help you to climb out of this spiral of SI joint pain very similar to back pain. So by the way, my name is Dr. Ryan Peebles. I've dedicated the last 20 years of my life to better understanding and reversing the root causes of chronic lower back pain. We have the pelvis here. This is one side and this is the other side. And in between those two hemi pelvises is the sacrum here. It's at the base of your spine. The SI joints are these two joints where the hemi pelvises connect to the sacrum. This right here is the inside of your SI joint without the pelvis attached to it. So that's the shape of the joint. It's a very big joint. And you can imagine placing the pelvis right there. And that is how they come together. And these joints get to be loose. These parts of the pelvis kind of can tilt forward and back. And if you look deep in there, these joints are connected with ligaments and it, they can become loose. These become unstable or hypermobile and the ligaments are getting stretched out. It's kind of like a sprain and it causes a lot of pain. It's a highly painful situation to be in. They can get out of place, they can get stuck out of place, or they can just be chronically loose where they're constantly moving and shifting on each other. You can feel sometimes a pop or repeated pops. You can do the same motion over and over and continue to get that pop or that click. That's promoting the problem. It may not be a painful pop at the time, or it could be a painful pop, but that is likely the joint that is moving. There's a very specific point in your lower back where you will feel the pain typically. If you say, I have pain right there, it's very specific. That's probably SI joint pain. Or it could be on the other side. It could be right there on this skeleton. Okay, so it is back pain. It's connected to your lower back. If you're unsure, that's kind of how you tell is the, the most obvious thing is, where is my pain? So I wanted to start with things to avoid because this could potentially be the most effective thing that you could start doing immediately it can be as simple as stop doing the things that are hurting it temporarily. You know, all of these things to avoid are not forever for the rest of your life. This is to get you out of the cycle and be able to climb out and get a little stability in the joints. And then you can reintroduce these activities. And there are very specific positions and movements that irritate the SI joint, hip external rotation stretches, things like the butterfly stretch, the figure four stretch, Pigeon stretch, if you're into yoga, will irritate the SI joint. All of these extreme stretches on the hip, they pull on that joint, tugging on those ligaments inside the joint. And you may not even feel the SI pain while you're doing that because while ligaments are being stretched and stressed, they often don't exhibit the painful symptom until after when they become slack. They're uncomfortable. Joints don't like that lax or loose position. And that's when you'll feel the pain when you get out of the position or when, when you get up from your seat and then you go, oh man, that hurts. But the thing that was causing the pain was actually the stretching of the ligament. Number two is deep squats, sitting on your heels in a relaxed position. You're hanging on your ligaments. Stress is gonna go right into the SI joint and irritate it. So deep hip stretches of all kinds, basically. The next thing that we want to avoid is crossing the legs, sitting asymmetrically or with your legs crossed. Whether you're sitting or standing, crossing the legs is gonna put pressure on one SI joint more than the other. If I tilt him and I, he only sits on one of the sit bones, there's gonna be a lot of torque going into this SI joint and this one because it's not symmetrical. And so the SI joints like when you sit on both sit bones at the same time. We want to avoid all kinds of asymmetrical activities. And this exercise here, bicycle crunch, when you're extending one leg and flexing the other, you're putting opposite forces of torque on the SI joints. So if you had SI joint pain and you're doing this exercise right here, what I would imagine if you have an unstable or hypermobile SI joint is every time you extend the leg, you're going to get a pop or a click in your low, low back here, or your pelvis. And that is the joint shifting or moving, boom. So we wanna avoid asymmetrical exercises, standing, standing on one leg, hopping up and down on one leg, stick with symmetrical things, the kneeling hip 
flexor stretch is responsible for causing SI joint problems. I have a history of chronic back pain and also chronic SI joint pain. So I'm speaking from experience and because of my chronic back pain, I used to, and my tight hip flexors, I used to stretch them every day and try to lengthen them to help my back. Over time, it broke down. It was torquing my SI joint. One joint was going this way and the other joint was going this way every time I did that stretch. And over years, it eventually broke down and then I gave myself SI joint problems. In the core balance training program, we do lengthen the hip flexors, but we don't do it in a way that stresses the SI joint. Uh, we do a modified version of the kneeling hip flexor stretch that is healthy for not only the, the SI joint, but also the spine and the whole body. And then we also do active stretching of the hip flexors where the glutes are stabilizing the SI joint while we're lengthening those muscles. And so what best to follow up things to avoid with? Things to do for improving the stability of your SI joints. So the first thing is to remember symmetry throughout your day because this is not just about things that you do in the gym for an hour a day or a few hours a week. It's all day long. So throughout your day and you're sitting and you find yourself with your legs crossed and you're sitting on one, you know, or you're leaning over to the side and, and you're leaning on your desk, remember, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to do that for a little while. And standing too, standing on one leg or leaning on one leg, we kind of want to avoid that. The next best thing you can do is strengthen your glutes. The glutes can create a force closure of the SI joints. Pulling these two joints together, it stabilizes the joint. So. Strengthening the glutes is extremely beneficial. It's only one element, but an exercise like the bridge, if you're doing it the right way, is really effective for that. It's also effective for the next thing you can do is lengthen your hip flexors. Remember, one of the worst things you can do is the kneeling hip flexor stretch or any kind of deep hip stretches. We want to lengthen the hip flexors in a strategic way. An active stretch that does not stress the SI joints. The bridge is an, is an example of that as well, but it's really important that you're doing the bridge the right way. And if you haven't done the free trial, we take four days to learn how to do the bridge the most perfect way with core connection and stability and, and it's free. So that would be a great place to start is just a free course on doing the perfect bridge. That's the first week of the core balance training program. So it's really important, I can't emphasize enough, that you're doing the bridge in a healthy way or it could be causing more damage and pain. Just like anything, it's not about what you do, it's about how you do it. The next one is the butt buster. It's a progression of the bridge. This is by far the most effective thing you can do to stabilize your SI joints. And so it's a version of the bridge where you put a band around your thighs and you push out into the band, a heavy, strong band, and you go to fatigue. It's even more important that you're doing the bridge the right way. This is an added element that adds more challenge and difficulty. And so we wanna make sure we have good form with the bridge before we add that progression. But it's extremely effective for stabilizing these joints. And then finally, the best thing you can do all around for stabilizing and reducing SI joint pain is gradually over time, bring your body back into balance, muscular balance. If you've seen the masterclass, you know that I teach about muscle imbalances in the pelvis and the spine and the upper body as well. And when you combine these inhibited muscles with these tight muscles, it gets pretty overwhelming to try and stretch the tight ones and strengthen all the weak ones. So we just take a different approach you learn how to move in a healthy way that brings your body back into balance. And so that's the best thing you can do for SI joint pain or lower back pain is gradually over time, develop a healthier relationship with your body so your body moves towards balance. If you have not subscribed to the channel, we do this every week. If you subscribe, you can get notified every time I go live, even if it's a different time and YouTube will send you a notification. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button and help spread the word that there is a solution to back pain. And the solution is developing a healthier relationship with your core and your body and the way you move.